Hello brothers and sisters. Welcome to day number 79. March 20th. We are still in Germany. So we're going to be reading today from numbers 30, 1 through 31, verse 54. Then Moses summoned the leaders of the tribes of Israel and told them, This is what the Lord has commanded. A man who makes a vow to the Lord or makes a pledge under oath must never break it. You must do exactly what he said he would do. If a young woman makes a vow to the Lord or a pledge under oath while she is still living at her father's home, and her father hears of the vow or, or pledge and does not object to it, then all her vows and pledges will stand. But if her father refuses to let her fulfill the vow or pledge on the day he hears of it, then all her vows and pledges will be will become invalid. The Lord will for, the Lord will forgive her because her father would not let her fulfill them. Now suppose a young woman makes a vow or binds herself with an impulsive pledge and later marries. If her husband learns of her vow or pledge and does not object on the day he hears of it, her vows and pledges will stand. But if her husband refuses to accept her vow or impulsive pledge on the day he hears of it, he nullifies her commitments and the Lord will forgive her. If, however, a woman is a widow or is divorced, she must fulfill all her vows and pledges. But suppose a woman is married and living in her husband's home when she makes her vow or binds herself with a pledge. If her husband hears of it and does not object to it, her vow or pledge will stand. But if her husband refuses to accept it on the day he hears of it, her vow or pledge will be nullified and the Lord will forgive her. So her husband may either confirm or nullify her vows or pledges she makes to deny herself. But if he does not object on the day he hears of it, then he is agreeing to all her vows and pledges. If he waits more than a day and then tries to nullify a vow or pledge, he will be punished for her guilt. These are the regulations the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife and between a father and a young daughter who still lives at home. Then the Lord said to Moses, On behalf of the people of Israel, take revenge on the Midianites for leading them into idolatry. After that, you will die and join your ancestors. So Moses said to the people, Choose some men and arm them to fight the Lord's war of revenge against Midian. From each tribe of Israel, send 1,000 men into battle. So they chose 1,000 men from each tribe of Israel, a total of 12,000 men armed for battle. Then Moses sent them out, 1,000 men from each tribe, and Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, led them into battle. They carried along the holy objects of the sanctuary and the trumpets for sounding the charge. They attacked Midian as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they killed all the men. All five of the Midianite kings, Evi, Rechem, Zor, Hor, and Reba, died in the battle. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. Then the Israelite army captured the Midianite women and children and seized their, seized their cattle and flocks and all their wealth as plunder. They burned all the towns and villages where the Midianites had lived. After they had gathered the plunder and captives, both people and animals, they brought them all to Moses and Eleazar the priest, and to the whole community of Israel, which was camped on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho. 
Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was furious with all the generals and captains who had returned from the battle. Why have you let all the women live? He demanded. These are the very ones who followed Balaam's advice and caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord at Mount Peor. They are the ones who caused the plague to strike the Lord's people. So kill all the boys and all the women who have had intercourse with the men. Only the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them from yourselves. Or you may keep them for yourselves. And all of you who have killed anyone or touched a dead body must stay outside the camp for seven days. You must purify yourselves and your captives on the third and seventh days. Purify all your clothing too and everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men who were in the battle, The Lord has given Moses this legal requirement. Anything made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, or lead, that is, all metals that do not burn must be passed through fire in order to be made ceremonially pure. These metal objects must then be further purified with the water of purification, but everything that burns must be purified by the water alone. On the seventh day you must wash your clothes and be purified, then you may return to the camp. And the Lord said to Moses, you and Eleazar the priest and the family leaders of each tribe are to make a list of all the plunder taken in the battle, including the people and animals. Then divide the plunder into two parts, and give half to the men who fought the battle and half to the rest of the people. From the army's position, first give the Lord his share of the plunder one of every 500 of the prisoners and of, and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats. Give this share of the armies half to Eleazar the priest as an offering to the Lord. From the half that belongs to the people of Israel, take one of every 50 of the prisoners and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, and other animals. Give this share to the Levites who are in charge of maintaining the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priests did as the Lord commanded Moses. The plunder remaining for, from everything the fighting men had taken total 675,000 sheep and goats, 72,000 um, cattle, 61,000 donkeys and 32,000 virgin girls. Half of the plunder was given to the fighting men. It totaled 337,500 sheep and goats, of which 675 were the Lord's share, 36,000 cattle, of which 72 were the Lord's share, 30,500 donkeys, of which 61 were the Lord's share, and 16,000 virgins, virgin girls, of whom 32 were the Lord's share. Moses gave all the Lord's share to Eleazar the priest, just as the Lord had directed him. Half of the plunder belonged to the people of Israel, and Moses separated it from the half belonging to the fighting men. It totaled 337,500 sheep and goats, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 virgin girls. From the half share given to the people, Moses took one of every 50 prisoners and animals and gave them to the Levites, who maintained the Lord's tabernacle. All this was done as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then all the generals and captains came to Moses and said, we, your servants, have accounted for all the men who went out to battle under our command. Not one of us is missing. So we are presenting the items of gold we capture as an offering to the Lord from our share of the plunder. 
armbands, bracelets, rings, earrings, and necklaces. <coughs> this will purify this will purify our lives before the Lord and make us right with him. So Moses and Eleazar the priests received the gold from all the military commanders, all kinds of jewelry and crafted objects. In all, the gold that the generals and captains presented as a gift to the Lord weighed about 420 pounds. All the fighting men had taken some of the plunder for themselves. So Moses and Eleazar the priests accepted the gifts from the generals and captains and brought the gold to the tabernacle as a reminder to the Lord that the people of Israel belonged to him. Luke 4, 1 through 30. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. No. Oh yeah. If you are the Son of God, jump off, for the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold, hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly throughout the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips. How can this be? They asked. Isn't this Joseph's son? Then he said, You will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself, meaning, Do miracles here in your hometown like those who did in Capernaum. But I tell you the, tr the truth, no prophet is accepted in his, home, in his own hometown. Certainly, there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the heavens were closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine dev devastated the land. Yet, Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zah. 
Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha, but the only one healed was Naaman, a Assyrian. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mopped him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him, to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Psalm 63, 1-11 O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there's, there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you throughout the night. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. But those plotting to destroy me will come to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. They will die by the sword and become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear to tell the truth will praise him, while liars will be silenced. Proverbs 11, 20 and 21. The Lord detests people with crooked hearts but he delights in those with integrity. Evil people will surely be punished, but the children of the godly will go free. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for another day in Germany, reading your Bible in these UNESCO um, historic landmarks. I will see you guys tomorrow for day number 80. God bless you.